Okay, welcome everybody back to yet another video build series. It's been a while, apologize for the long delay, but uh, I just have not really had a lot of spare cash. I'm sure most people understand that the way things have been going lately. So uh, I've got the schematic up now, we'll talk through it in a moment, but effectively what we're going to be building is um, a basement that has been uh, reverse engineered from a build that basically was modified by Dumble. Uh, a lot of people say this really looks a lot like a kind of like a Marshall or even a hot rod of Marshall stuffed into a basement. Um, but effectively, I'm going to build it from scratch. What he would do is take a lot of these amps and build them and tweak them custom for a person. So we're going to look over the schematic of one that was put on the Amp Garage forums that I was able to kind of try and update and work through and get a little bit more tweaked to what we think is more accurate. But even then, we're not 100% sure. But the, the whole point here is that really you'll, you'll see that it's got two main channels, the drive channel and then the normal channel. The normal channel has a, a more limited tone stack where you just have a treble and a bass and there's no real mid, it's just a fixed mid value. Uh, and then it goes into a volume and then into a kind of recovery after the tone stack that then goes in through a 470k mixing resistor into the output, the phase inverter and the power tubes. And then the drive channel, it actually has uh, what uh, effectively um, quite a bit more gain going on here because we have a, uh, a gain stage uh, and then a volume, and then another gain stage into a cathode following um, driver for the tone stack. Inside the tone stack as well, there's kind of a typical dumbled rock jazz switch that allows you to kind of switch in and out a little bit of a frequency change so that it's better for rock and or jazz just by that quick switch. Uh, if I remember right, the rock jazz switch kind of pulls out the uh, lower levels of the middle and the bass and leaves only kind of the treble pot into the into the main uh, part here. So you can kind of adjust the treble, but you get a little bit more boost kind of overall in your rock and in your, for your mid uh, for your mid and bass. So uh, and then that comes in into the other side of the 470k resistor into this. Uh, you know, the phase inverter input. Then you have the phase inverter input uh, into uh, the typical kind of bias mixing resistors where we feed off the bias into these and then into a couple of grid stopper resistors into the power tubes. Um, I'm likely planning on doing this as a four tube, uh, you know, a hundred watt, but I just have it set up as, a t as two tubes. Uh, I think it might have been a 50 watt originally, but I tend to like having the larger output section possibility. It is also possible due to the 220k resistors, I could very easily do a post phase inverter master volume in this spot as well, which I might potentially decide to do later as well. But for now, the basics of it will be that. So here's the main power section. We have AC power into a transformer. We have a bias tap that comes off to our bias circuit with kind of some of the typical values you'd use that for a basement. But then if you notice the, the power filtering through here, actually I think this is actually not typical for a basement, this is a bit more typical for a um, for the four EL34s or two EL34s, you know, I'll have to look and see, I might do tweak this a little bit, but uh, this is set up for the, you know, this basement that's been modded to use the EL34s and to have a more typical um, filtering section that would be common in a uh, in a Marshall style amp. So we have a hundred uh, microfarads here um, with uh, the first stage, but they've doubled up a couple of hundreds to give it 50 effective, but give it a lot more voltage ca carrying capacity on that first node where we'll have a lot higher voltage into a choke, then off to four more stages of 50 microfarad capacitance filtering. Now what I'm gonna actually do this in this build is I've found there are now, instead of electrolytic capacitors, everywhere I can, I've replaced them with, and there's newer, more, much more common metal film um, type capacitors that are non-electrolytic and will last just as long as any other. They're t typically more used for power supplies, but they work great in this case as well because they will still provide that level of capacitance. So I found a 50 microfarad, um, and I think it's 600 volt or 1,000 volts, I don't remember which, but it's well over the range of what we need for these uh, in this amp. Uh, and I've got bought five of those, and I will just put them in those spots as well. And they're a larger style resist uh, capacitor that has... Um, like two leads on either side. And I think that's because those two leads give it a little bit extra current carrying capacity, you know, uh, instead. So both of them are still connected to the same potential, but just gives it two lugs to feed into them instead of one lug, like uh, is commonly used on a lot of other filter capacitors. Uh, and so that's one thing that will be a little bit different on this build as well. And then, um, and on the loudspeaker, my plan is to use a, a loudspeaker that Dumble used commonly on a lot of his builds, which is an Electrovoice EVM12L. It's a 12 watt, um, very full frequency range speaker that is great for being guitar or bass or almost anything because it's got such great frequency response. And Dumble really liked those because it really lets the amp speak for its full voice range and doesn't try and, you know, some, some things that are really amazing about some speakers is they fit a style really well, um, but that means that that 
does change the tone of the amp itself to that speaker type. And people realize a significant change in tone by speaker swapping. One of the things he did like, I think, about these is that they are very much more wider frequency range and therefore will allow the speaker to more truly kind of come out, if you will. So, uh, so I'm going to do that. And the other thing is I'm going to do this entire build pretty much from scratch. Uh, and I'm going to build it as a combo. So uh, I'm going to... I'm, I'm going to source all the parts, put those all together and, uh, you know, and put this into one completed combo when I'm done that was built everything pretty much by me that I can. The only part I won't do is the, I don't have the kind of metal mint working tools to build the chassis. So I'm going to buy a chassis and then I will just have to, you know, put my holes in it that I need and whatnot. But, uh, and I'm also planning on trying to look to potentially getting my faceplates done first, um, uh, designed the way I want them, order them from the third party, get them in and then kind of map those onto the, the uh, chassis. So I put my holes based upon that instead. So um, hopefully this whole process will make sense and be interesting to y'all. And uh, if you do like it, please uh, let me know in the comment section below. Give me a like, subscribe, thumbs up, all that kind of stuff would be greatly appreciated. Uh, the only other thing I want to note is that on this build, I, it's not going to be a fast build because I'm, uh, I'm trying to keep myself to a budget now where I will spend only a certain amount of month on these kinds of projects, uh, you know, and so I will be able to get a few components each month that will make it work for me. But, you know, right now I've bought most of the components and they're on the way for the, you know, capacitors and resistors and whatnot and the tube sockets and things like that. And then probably first part of next month, I would be into buying my chassis and the transformers, etc. So it's going to be a kind of a slow moving project. I'm not going to be doing it in a hurry. Hopefully you guys will be patient with me. If you're not wanting to wait, it looks like something you want to see done faster, please feel free to let me know uh, either via, uh, I do have a Patreon that'll link. You can give me a little bit of extra cash there if you'd like to, to help support the project, but by all means, there's no requirement for that. Uh, if you're just willing to be patient, wait, we'll hopefully have this project done in a few months. Uh, so there you go. There you have it, everybody. Thanks. Enjoy.